Ensuring a tight seal against vacuum leaks starts all the way back with your intake manifold. If you swapped intakes for your carburetor install, be sure that you know that your intake is seated correctly and that your gaskets were sealed properly in the first place. All intake manifolds should have been torqued to their proper specs as well. If you're sure that all checks out, you'll know that there won't be any vacuum leaks at the intake where it meets the cylinder heads. Working backwards from the intake, the next possible leak point could be the base of the carburetor where it meets the intake. Double check that all your bolts are firmly hand tightened in a crisscross pattern. You'll want to triple check this if you have an adapter plate installed under the carburetor base. There should be a gasket on each side of the adapter plate. Now let's think about the vacuum line connections that will go to the intake or the carburetor. Let's start with the biggest lines first. Most engines have some type of PCV hose that will suck crankcase fumes from the engine's internals and reburn them by sending them back into the intake. Usually this is through a large port on the base of the carburetor. If your PCV is clogged, faulty, or not installed, you'll have a vacuum leak that'll cause all kinds of rough running symptoms. If you can install a new PCV, do so and connect the other end to one of the large ports on your carburetor base. If you have power brakes, it's usually best to use one dedicated large port for the power brake booster line and not split the line to share with another accessory. If you need to, you could install a vacuum fitting in the intake where you can get a full manifold vacuum source. Most intakes have extra ports for installing additional vacuum fittings. If you have other accessories that require a large vacuum port, generally it's all right to use a vacuum T and share one large port as long as the splitting doesn't involve a power brake booster line. When it comes to the smaller lines, hopefully you took notes while you were removing the old carburetor. You'll want to refer to the notes as you put everything back together. Sometimes the lines will need to be extended or shortened to make it to their new positions on your new carburetor. For most vacuum lines, you can usually make a choice as to whether you connect them to the ports on the base of the carburetor or install a fitting into the threaded port of the intake. Either of these places will provide a full manifold vacuum signal. These ports might be where EGR lines or transmission kickdown lines might need to be connected. You can either refer to your notes or some repair manuals have a vacuum line routing diagram to help you decide on your new connections. If you have a vacuum advanced distributor, that has a vacuum line, you'll need to make one special connection. Most vacuum advanced distributors will benefit by connecting them to the timed vacuum port that's located on the passenger side of the primary metering block of most Holley carburetors. This special port is designed to provide little or no vacuum signal at idle, but will provide full vacuum when it's needed once the engine RPMs rise. Keep in mind, some early model pre-1970 vacuum distributors do need to have a full manifold vacuum signal at idle. Look up your distributor type and its vacuum requirements if you're not sure. When all of your lines are hooked up, be aware that the best way to tune your carburetor idle system is with a vacuum gauge. We'll show you how to do this in a bit. Just keep in mind, when you do so, you'll want to pull one of the vacuum lines that will give you full manifold vacuum. Or you could install a vacuum T and that'll give you an access point for the gauge, and when it's not in use, you'll keep it capped. 